everyone, we're so glad you have joined us this morning. Psalm 34, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. So let's bless him today. Let's worship him today with all of our hearts. Come on. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our song be a sign. We are here for you. Yes, we are. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. Yes, we are. We are. We are here for you. Let's open up to him. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. To you alone are holy. Only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Let us shout. Your anthem, your renown, fill the sky. We are here for you. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are here for you. Let your word come in power. Let what's dead come to life. For you, oh, we are here for you. We are here for you. To you, our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. To you alone, our holy, only you are worthy. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. To you alone are holy. Only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Oh, let your fire fall down. We open up our hearts, Lord. The 
darkness fades into new beginnings as we lift our eyes to hope beyond our creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God come on we will not be the silence breaks in the name of Jesus let the heavens cry let the earth respond all creation shouts with the voice of triumph to declare the reign of the Lord our God come on we will not be moved when the earth gives way again to the bridge online pastor jeff pastor rod with you today and first off happy, happy thanksgiving, thanksgiving. Uh, we know that this thanksgiving is going to likely look different than what we're used to um, but we are hoping and we're praying that you can connect in a meaningful and new ways with your loved ones and that god will also be with you guys in the midst of this and for us in this moment right now we just want to take a couple minutes of your time to orient you all towards ways to connect and if you're new with us this morning or you consider yourself new to the bridge this season, Rod's gonna let you know of some ways that you can connect and journey with us and us with you. Yeah, that's right. There, there's a link in, for our digital connection card in the description below. So whether it's right now or after service, we would love for you to click on that and fill that out. It's your way of letting us know that you're here and you're saying hello. Um, and it's also a great way for us to start that connection. And I'm sure by now, you guys know the drill. If you fill that out, if you fill that form out, we'll send you a special gift just for reaching out today. Or if you prefer, you can also email us at hello at thebridgemarkham.com and let us know you are ready to connect. 
the option is always available for you. Yeah, and we have many other growth and connection opportunities available to you as well. For starters, we've been announcing our Discover Your Purpose event that's coming up real soon. And registration for this 90 minute session ends this Tuesday, October 13th. So make sure you check out the link in the description to register for either of these two dates. If you're not yet serving at The Bridge and you wanna discover more of how you're wired and how you can serve in your gifting, Discover Your Purpose is a perfect fit for you. And there's another growth opportunity for those who are married. Alpha Marriage is kicking off this Wednesday. And so if you're looking to strengthen your marriage, consider signing up for this seven week course offered by Alpha. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. So check out the link below for more information and get signed up. Yeah, and for those of you that are not yet married, don't worry, we've got you covered. Pastor Sam is once again launching Before I Say Yes and Before I Get Serious sessions, which both start in November. So if you're in a dating phase or you're just before the marriage phase in your relationship, consider signing up for one of these ongoing sessions. Pastor Sam does a great job facilitating and teaching through these courses. I recommend you check them out. Make sure you head to the link in the description for more information. There's one more link that you'll see in our description that takes you to our giving page. You can follow the simple instructions under ways to give in order to continue to support the kingdom work happening here in Markham and around the world. In fact, we're going to hear more about this next week for our On Mission Sunday as we highlight and share stories of how God is on the move in our church, our region, and the world. Yeah, so stay tuned to that for next week. But right now, let's join Pastor Brian as he concludes our All In series with a sermon called Loving Your Neighbor. No holding back. No half measures. Let's build a faith that's all inclusive. Let's be all in. Hey everybody, it's great to be with you on the fifth message in this series called All In. We're answering the question, what does God want from us? What does he expect? Do you know? That's a question that every person has to answer. Because if there is a God, and I'm assuming that you're open to that idea, you need to know what it is that God wants from you. That knowledge would be very important as to how you live your life. This is what we've been looking at in this series, all in. Whatever it is that God wants, we want to be all in on that. You might be interested in what Jesus said about what God wants from us more than anything else. Jesus was once asked straight up, of all the commandments from God, which is the most important? That's not such an easy question to answer. There are many commandments from God in the Bible. If you open your Bible at the beginning, the first five books are called the law. They show us what pleases God. For example, you find the 10 commandments in those books. In those 10 commandments, God says, don't steal because that hurts people that I love and it destroys community. Don't commit murder because that kills people that I created and so on and so on. The rabbis counted up these commands and there were 613 commandments in the law. They debated which of these 613 commandments was most important. Which one was the core commandment? Is it more important not to steal or is it more important not to murder? Which commandment, if you get it right, means that you have pretty much everything else right? That you're living in the will of God and doing what pleases him. Well, one day, a man with a PhD in religious studies asked Jesus, what's your take? What do you think is the most important command? And Jesus answers him immediately. He says, the most important command is this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. 
Now we all understand that the most important command is to love God with everything you've got. Don't hold anything back. Your entire life should be a gift of love to God. We've been referring to this in this series as being all in. Four times Jesus emphasizes that it's an all in kind of love that God wants. He says we are to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. Last week, Pastor Emily preached a great message, and she reminded us that our heart is our affection, our soul is our devotion, our mind is our developed appreciation, and our strength is about our participation. It's about what we have and what we do with what we have as to how we love God. It puts what's going on inside us into motion, into fully participating in what God is doing in the world. Loving God with all your strength says, God, I love you with all of my opportunities, my influence, my time, my plans, my resources. Strength speaks to your muchness, Emily said. It means our Everything is fully engaged in our love and our devotion to God and to those that he loves. The timing is so great in this weekend in that it's Thanksgiving. This is the time of year where our love and our appreciation for God translates from Thanksgiving to thanks living. Thanks living is where our affection, our devotion, our appreciation and our participation explode out into the world. It's sharing out of the fullness of what you yourself possess. So, what is the most important commandment of God? So important that it so aptly describes what he wants. Well, it's called the great commandment. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And then Jesus says there's a second most important command. It's closely related to the first. In fact, you can't disconnect the two. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. Do you want to know what God wants from you? What he wants more than anything else? He wants love. It all comes down to love. That's what God cares about. That's what he thinks is central for you and I. That's what he commands us to do. And it's not just a love for God that could somehow ignore the needs of people. No, no. The two most important commands are intertwined and cannot be disconnected. Like your right hand and your left hand. When you love God and you love other people, you've just offered, offered up the one sacrifice that God finds most pleasing. God asks for nothing else from you. Get this and you've got it. Love God and love other people, and you can't separate the two. Now, Saul Bellows writes a collection of traditional Jewish tales, and he shares this story. In a small Jewish town in Russia, there is a rabbi who disappears each Friday morning for several hours. His devoted disciples boast that during those hours, their rabbi goes up to heaven and he talks to God. Now, a stranger moves into town and he hears this story and he's skeptical about all of this. So he decides to check things out for himself. He hides and he watches. The rabbi gets up in the morning, says his prayers, and then dresses in peasant clothes. He grabs an ax, goes off into the woods, and he cuts some firewood, which he then hauls to a shack on the outskirts of the village. There, an older woman and her sick son live. And he leaves them the wood, enough for a whole week. And then he sneaks back home. Having observed the rabbi's actions, the newcomer stays on in the village and becomes his disciple. And whenever he hears one of the villagers say, on Friday morning our rabbi ascends all the way to heaven, the newcomer quietly adds, if not higher. Your love for one another will prove to this world that you are my disciples, says Jesus. 
I remember listening to a news bite this past summer where the governor of New York was appealing to New Yorkers to get beyond their own personal rights and their personal freedoms and to love and respect their fellow person enough to wear their mask during this pandemic. He said, wearing a mask makes a statement. When you wear a mask, you say, I respect you. That's what the mask says to everyone that you walk past. I respect your health. I respect your privacy. I respect your space. I respect you. And out of respect for you, I wear this mask. And holding up the mask, the governor went on to say, this mask says, I respect the nurses and the doctors who killed themselves through this virus to serve you, to serve other people. This mask says, I respect the essential workers who get up every day and drive the bus or drive the train or deliver the food or keep the lights on so that I can stay home and stay safe. Man, I love that. When I heard the governor say that, I was thinking about how it is that we communicate love to our community, even in the midst of this pandemic. Loving God in an all-in manner means that our affection, our devotion, our appreciation, and our participation reflects in the way in which we love and respect others. The good news is that what God asks of us is an equal opportunity for all. It's something anyone can do, no matter how much education you have, no matter how much money you've got, no matter what you look like or what you've gone through. We can all fulfill the will of God because we can all love him and we can love other people. Now, here's the bad news. The bad news is we don't do it. God commands us to do it, and Jesus calls us to do it, but we, we know within ourselves that we don't really love God with all of our heart. Instead, we love him with some of our heart, and a little bit of our soul, and a fraction of our mind, and a portion of our strength. The rest we keep for ourselves. The reality is, we have these pockets of rebellion in our hearts where we resist God and do not surrender to him in love. We love him to some extent, but we keep him out of those certain areas. Now, maybe for you, it's your kids. God can have every part of you, but we, we function as if we're in control when it comes to our kids. Maybe it's your own self, your own happiness, that you have not yet surrendered to God. But you'll need to realize happiness is to be found on the other side of love. It could be money. Money could be the issue for you. That could be the hard one for some. I once saw a cartoon entitled The Baptism, where a person is completely underwater except for one hand, which is still sticking out above the water and clutched in that one hand is the person's wallet. I understand that it can be hard to love God with your whole wallet. Some years ago, a preacher named Lyle Dorsett preached a sermon on tithing. If you know Lyle, you'll know that he can really preach. It was challenging and it was confrontational. And he said the church's financial problems are not economic in nature. They are not financial or circumstantial. No, rather our problems related to the church's finances, stem from our lack of loving God, our unreserved, fully informed love and devotion to a God who has promised to meet all our needs. At the time that I heard this, I was not expecting it. I was busted. I had nothing to say because I was only giving five, maybe 6% of my tithe to God. Lyle was right on. Something had to change in my life. With God's help, that did change. But I know just how hard it is for my heart, which doesn't always trust God the way it should, to really love him so much that I'll pour out everything for him, to give freely to him because he gave so freely to me. True thanksgiving expresses itself with thanks living. I hate that part in me. Why do I find it so hard to do what Jesus said and love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength? 
Every week, it's only simple honesty for you and I to simply confess to God, we have not loved you with our whole hearts, our whole minds, our whole soul, or our whole strength. But I want to love God with my all. I really do. Don't you? The question is, how? How do I increase my devotion to God from, say, 45% of my heart to 65%? Maybe 85% to 95%. I've been thinking about this. And as one of your pastors, I want to make a suggestion that I think will help you grow in how much you love God. It's simple. My suggestion is that you say one word to God more frequently. And the word is yes. If you want to love God with your whole heart, just say yes. You ask, yeah, but what am I saying yes to? Well, in order to know the answer to that question, you have to listen to God. Now, that doesn't come easy for us who live in the GTA. That normal life will be so busy, so distracted, and so fatiguing that you'll find it nearly impossible to hear the voice of God. You end up with, with nothing to say yes to at times. But here's what happens when we slow down and we hear from God. One of the first things you're going to hear is, I love you. You say, hey, when I get quiet, I don't hear I love you. I hear you're such a screw up, Brian. Those are your negative and or my negative inaccurate recordings playing inside my head. Maybe that's what you heard from your parents or what you tell yourself, but that is not God. When God talks to you, he talks to you in the language of love. Even when he corrects you, which he will, he does it in love. When you hear God say, I love you, here's what you say. Say yes. With all your will, open up and say, yes, God, I hear you. And I hear you saying that you love me. And I accept that. I choose not to give in to my natural self-hatred, or my self-absorption. When you say yes to God's love for you, you'll find it a lot easier to do the second commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. What you've been experiencing from God, you start to pass it on to others. God fills us up with his spirit and his love, and we surprise ourselves because we find ourselves loving people in a way that we couldn't before. God's forgiven us of our junk, so you can forgive of someone else of theirs. God's been patient when you've been slow to grow up, so you can be patient with that person in your family or your church group or your job who's immature and is stuck. It's really uncanny. I'm not sure how it works, but if you say yes to God, you'll automatically end up loving your neighbor too. Some time ago, I was feeling a little stuck on the matter of how to love through a predicament in my marriage. In the midst of this, I read the verse in God's word that says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Now, I knew that Jesus had died for the church, so it meant that I was going to need to sacrifice but without really thinking about all the implications of what it would mean for me to love my wife that way, I just said yes. Now, Kevin Miller, an author and a pastor, illustrates this in his own love life. He says, shortly after my wife and I got married, my dad came to visit us in our apartment. After dinner, I got up and cleared the dishes from the table. My dad looked at me and he said, boy, you are henpecked. I could feel his disapproval and his shame, like stinging needles all over my skin. But I shook them off because God had said to me, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And I said yes to God on that verse. He goes further in explaining the all-in nature of love. He says, it was a bad day for me when I learned that my wife's love language is 
acts of service. Now, why couldn't my wife's love language be something easier like receiving gifts so I could just stop off at the corner stand and get a dozen roses for 10 bucks and then just be done with it? No, no, no. For her, love meant actually serving her, like moving the laundry from the washer to the dryer. Now, my twin brother always says, I don't go near those big white boxes in the basement. And that's the way I felt. But when God speaks to you, if you're going to say yes to God, it will take you to some new places, including standing next to the dryer in the basement. I love what he had to say there. When you say yes to God, you end up loving him more. And you also automatically end up loving your neighbor more as well. So let's, let's just make this personal. What is God saying to you? What is he asking of you? Two of Jesus' most famous teachings are, love your neighbor as yourself, and greater love has no person than this, than he who would lay down his life for his friends. For some of you, these verses leave you with your pulse pounding. You know exactly what God has been asking of you, and you don't know if you can say yes. Well, Tell him, just do it, say yes, love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give him everything you've got, because when you say yes to God, you grow in love for him, and you grow in love for your neighbor. There's a fellow by the name of Fred Douglas Shepherd. He was born on September 11th in 1855. He was born in Ellensburg, New York, in Clinton County. His father died while he was very young, and his mother spent most of her adult life as an invalid. It was probably through this that Fred became associated with and familiar with illness and the caring for those who were sick. Fred lived with his family in Madrid. It was there in a revival meeting in a Baptist church that he accepted Christ as his savior, and he threw himself completely all in in the Christian life. At the age of 22, he studied medicine, and at 27, he married a young lady who was also a doctor. They felt a calling and turned their faces towards the east, eastern Turkey to be exact. The shepherds spent the remaining days of their lives in eastern Turkey. He started a school of medicine, and 221 men graduated from there to aid in the terrible disease and suffering throughout the country. His records show that by 1914, he had seen 6,000 patients in his clinic, called on others in over 2,000 homes, and had only 800 paying patients. Shepherd's service was so significant that he received decorations from the Red Cross and President Taft in 1909 and from the Sultan of Turkey in 1911. The Sultan said, the decoration bestowed upon you is nothing compared with your most admiring sympathy shown to the suffering of humanity. In 1908, the largest Protestant church in Turkey held a silver anniversary of Fred Shepherd's ministry there. It was filled with Muslims, Catholics, Gregorians, and Jews as well as Protestants. For two hours, these folks stood and talked about what Dr. Shepard had done for them, for the love that he showed them. And while reflecting over his ministry, he said that the celebration was really not about him, but about one even greater than him, God, God and his love. Because I have understood a little about that love, he said, I try to let others know about it. This is my purpose in life. I did not come to this country to make money or a reputation. I came to bear witness that God is love. If by my work I have been able to show you him, I have had my reward and I thank him for it. This five foot four inch husky farm lad from Madrid brought relief to an entire country in an era when disease was running rampant. Fred Shepard understood a little bit as to what it means to love your neighbor 
as yourself. He was all in, in his love for God and for others. May God help you and I to be and to do the same. Bless you. Your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God You have been faithful All my life You have been so, so good With every breath that I am made I will sing of the goodness of God have led me through the fire in the darkest night you are close like no other i know you as a father i know you as a friend i have lived in the goodness of god That's it for us today. What a great close and wrap up to our All In series. There's so much to both challenge and encourage us over these past five weeks. Yes, definitely for sure. And, and make sure that you tune in next week for our On Mission Sunday. Um, you're gonna hear some powerful stories of people and groups within our church being the hands and feet of Jesus. I'm telling you, you're not gonna wanna miss it. Yeah, so until then, we'll see ya. <laughs>